Thanks for tuning in today, guys, to Electro Bikes US channel. We're really excited today to review the RAR Mantis. We've actually been testing this bike pretty extensively across the course of the past few weeks, testing it directly against the Talaria Sting MX3 model. The MX3 model has been surpassed by the MX4 Sting R. And without further ado, let's get to it. All right, so I want to design this review with the Mantis be kind of more conversational rather than promotional. Just do a little housekeeping rules. I'm not sponsored for this. I bought the bike at full price and Raw or Mantis is not compensating me in any way. So I am free and clear to give any praise and criticism I want without any reward or benefit. Also, even though I do run a shop with Electro Bikes US, I don't deal Raw. But if I did, I would still be giving you the pros and cons. When you're investing this kind of money, you need to know the good and the bad. There's so many great electric bikes out there now and the market keeps growing in it. But there'll never be a perfect electric bike for everything, for everyone. And each one will have its strong suit and its weak point. My promise to you as a viewer is not to waste your time with any review that doesn't have at least a set of criticisms or needs improvement or could improve. I'm not trying to split hairs. But in doing so, if someone in the industry comes across some of these suggestions or your comments that make suggestions for improvements, then perhaps we'll get a better bike in the future and more value for our money. So without delay, talking about the Raw Mantis, uh, it's really hard to do a review without there being almost a comparison. That's really usually a component of a review. But this bike in some ways is kind of difficult to compare to anything on the market that I'm familiar with or have ridden. Even though it's slated to compete directly against the Light BX and the Talari Sting, it does only in some ways. In other ways, it's entirely more towards the Ultra B, the Suron Ultra B, in terms of form factor size, in some ways, as far as the frame angle with the fork rake. Going into riding it, it is very interesting and different than the Talari Sting that I have, the MX3, that we've been testing it right up against it. And so we really had three different test riders. Well, really four all together over the course of several weeks of testing the RAR Mantis. And the only other bike we had on hand, just for clarification, was the Talaria MX3, not the R model. So that's 6,000 watts peak. The RAR Mantis is, is peaked at 7,500 watts on paper, or at least that's the manufacturer's claim. Just take that at face value and keep that in mind. A um, couple of things about the RAR. It's been in development for... I believe a little over a year, the better part of a year before it actually hit the States. I think it w exceeded one year mark on that time, which is fairly reasonable given the hurdles we have had in shipping and manufacturing and so forth over the past few years. But with that said, the bike initially launched with a totally different, well, different, I want to say totally, but different specs than what we're seeing now. They have went back and adjusted and I kind of applaud them for that because I think they're trying to get more grounded. Uh, figure of what the bike's parameters actually are. But under the terms of what myself and others first purchased the bike as the first 150 units that came in the United States, the specs have changed. So I'll run through those real quick. Initially, it was slated that the bike would do in certain eco modes up to 81, 82 miles per charge. I think we all knew that was suspicious with a 35 amp hour battery, even with Samsung sales. That's a tall order to expect that to actually pan out. What it actually has changed to now, they're saying 75 miles in Eco 1. After having tested Eco 1, most people aren't going to want to ride that slow. It's very much a limp mode. I never saw over 15, 16 miles an hour. When I tried any amount of off-roading in Eco 1, it could barely get up a small bank without losing all torque and power and just stopping and stalling. 
but that's okay. That is the lowest eco mode. This isn't like a regen mode either necessarily. I mean, it is, it does have regen features, but it's not just based on regenerative braking. Like with the Talaria, I feel like the eco modes are more closely matched and you're more or less selecting between how much engine braking characteristics you want to feel or what would be comparable to a motorcycle bike having engine braking with the Talaria. And, and they're slightly noticeable with that bike's changes with the RAR, the eco modes are very much power based and both torque and horsepower, if you will. The top speeds are very much affected, uh, probably more than the Talaria, or at least more notable than the Talaria for sure. Uh, eco mode one would only do 15 to 16 miles an hour for me. Eco two would, you know, 25 tops is about what I saw. Eco three actually has some power, not near the torque of sport mode. It would not power Willy with me. You could certainly ride Willys and pop Willys in Eco three. But I doubt you're going to be power willing. It certainly won't with me. But I am 6'1", 220 pounds. I'm definitely on the upper larger size of weight and maybe a little above average on height. So might be a little different for you, but I would suspect you'll be in sport if you want to do power uh, willies. The other thing that changed was the 0 to 30. They were saying somewhere around 1.8, 1.9 seconds, 0 to 30. That's changed pretty drastically to 2.9 seconds. So there's a whole nurse second added in there and that. I would say it's very much more accurate even in sport. Uh, the RAR never could match the Talaria Sting MX3 acceleration. Through this testing, I at one point started with both bikes in stock form, but the only changes that were ever made with either bike was never related to battery or motor. It was related to gearing and chain and gear oil, and that was it. So the Talaria I did go from stock format of 44 tooth rear sprocket to a 54 tooth rear sprocket. I stayed with the 14 tooth front. And the Talaria does run a 420 size motocross chain. The RAR Mantas come spec with the 428 motocross chain and sprocket and cog in the front. So it's thicker and heavier. It's really not needed in its stock form. It's an overkill in terms of that drivetrain. I don't think it's needed at all. But that is why I went back with a 60 tooth rear sprocket on the uh, RAR Mantas and a 14 tooth front stayed the same. But I went to a 420 chain, an RK Racing Gold chain on both bikes so 60 14 on the mantis for the second half of our testing and the talaria 54 14 both running 420 drive trains now both having the same lucas gear old adw 90 full synthetic gear oil as well and what i found was the mantis could never match the talaria in any form whether stock or after the gear changes it could never match it on acceleration it just kind of i could keep up with it better and got better range after I changed to a 60 tooth in the rear and a 420 drivetrain on the Mantis. It certainly got better, but it would always gap me between 20, 30 feet. And depending on the riding, you know, sometimes those yards could change depending on who was riding and how they're riding. And if I made a mistake around our little tracks we're running, which were not motocross tracks by any means, just off-road pasture areas and, you know, a little service type roads near a uh, pasture land, but it was still a good test to, uh, Actually, probably a bear test and motocross course because then it doesn't come down to the rider's ability on jumps or clearing obstacles being such a big difference. But between all test riders, everybody agreed the Talaria just felt like a little dynamo is what we called it. It was really exciting uh, until the torque cuts off around 25 miles an hour or so. It just really pulls hard off the bat, just takes off, and it's so much fun. But it's shorter wheelbase, which is shorter by, depending on chain adjustment on the Mantis and, of course, Talaria, it seems to gravitate around two to two and a half inch shorter wheelbase on the Talaria Sting than the RAR Mantis. The Mantis just feels more planted. I don't know. I'm sure the two inch longer wheelbase helps a little, but that height for a taller rider, if your inseam is 30 inches or above, the Mantis is just going to feel more natural and a li little bit more like a proper size bike rather than just a pit bike, where the Talaria, I feel very much is uh undersized for me in its stock format and i wasn't alone the other three test riders felt the same <laughs> out of the four adult male test riders if you want a bigger size bike then hands down the mantis wins in that category it wins in feeling more planted and i would have to say that's going to go the same for the new r model as far as just stability in stock form because the r model even with the talaria factory fork they appear to be fast ace forks are really close with just different internals and adjustment controls but the size and feel other people have noted are pretty close to the same as what the Fast Ace Mantis has KKE suspension front rear, which is actually as good as anything else as 
I would think you could expect. It actually feels better in the Fast Ace for me because it's just a taller, it feels like a taller uh, stack or something. It just sets up a uh, higher in general um, and isn't as squatty feeling as the Fast Ace. I've, when I first tried to set up the Fast Ace, I could always bottom it out at my weight. The um, KKE on the Mantis, I can adjust and get it pretty close to something I like. Uh, all the test riders felt like the suspension was better and closer to motorcycle suspension on the Mantis. The, the Mantis brakes are definitely not motocross brakes. They're still kind of heavy duty downhill mountain bike-ish, maybe between a dirt bike, off-road motorcycle brake and a mountain bike brake. Uh, and they're honestly, they work better for me than what's on the Telaria stock, um, which has been noted by some people, Telaria, especially the MX-3 had a little bit soft brakes. I've actually seen some reviews where they say the MX-4 with the bigger rotor still have a softer brake. It's just mixed opinions with that, but the Mantis brakes feel good. Uh, they're four, uh, caliper hydraulic, full hydraulic and, um, the rotor size and everything don't feel undersized. Of course, you can always have more braking, but uh, the rear will lock up exceptionally quickly, just like I can lock it up uh, very quickly with the Talari as well. But just the higher height and taller wheelbase of Mantis is really good. The tires that come with it are decent. Of course, I would prefer a 21-inch front wheel. All of the test riders, including myself, have some motorcycling background. That includes motocross or enduro. All three of the other guys raced enduro, hair scramblers, and some motocross all noted that the Mantis felt more like motocross suspension and it set more like a dirt bike because it's just taller um felt more planted and safe on it but if the Talaria, when we every time we started the Talaria right next to each other no matter who was on what the Talaria would always win the whole shot it would no matter which gearing we had on either bike the Talaria it was just faster acceleration off the bat but if you're a equally matched rider I found that that gap remained the same like it's just that initial launch and then once it cut off the mantis would hold the gap right to them. Nobody would run off and leave them. In fact, once I did the gear change and turned off the safety um, sensors on the Mantis, it really came alive. And the only thing it was still lacking in was that initial zero mile per hour start, just that initial launch against the Talaria Sting MX-3. Of course, MX-4 is going to eat it for lunch that much more, I guess. And maybe it would not be able to maintain that gap in its stock form, which is another thing. If you're going to get the Mantis, you're going to probably end up wanting at some point to bump up the controller and the battery whether that's a 60 volt or a 72 volt system or but they're supposed to be providing unlimited aftermarket upgrades and parts for it so i think that'll definitely be on the table to where you can do that with ease and i think that that's a good thing to think about doing because as it stands now from my personal opinion it's got plenty of power for urban environments on the street kind of commuting you know, it, it's fine. It's good. In fact, you might, because the battery is a little undersized, you might not want to bump it up without bumping up that battery because you're going to really kill the range. So I would suggest those two things have to be done at the same time. Then comes in the argument, do you want to do that for forty nine ninety nine, or do you want to spend about 4500 on that Sting R with a bigger battery and more power? But range tests are coming in on the Sting R. I've already seen from Talaria Boys and a few other people. It seems like the R has about an eight mile advantage in eco mode for the battery size being bigger but when it comes to sport it actually was a reduced mileage compared to the mx3 by a little bit i think it was only 0.6 miles or something it was, seemed like it was when a half mile with their test now that may vary bike to bike and condition to condition but a lot of times when they're given these specs they're in the most ideal condition um, uh you could pretty much bet with those numbers that they're probably just rolling it down the road and maybe not too hilly of an environment so the other thing back to the RAR's initial claims would be an 81, 82 miles. They're saying 75 miles in Eco 1. I take that with a grain of salt, even in Eco 1, as slow as it is. It probably possibly could do that, and it would depend on terrain and rider weight and everything. I would, from my experience, and I didn't spend much time in Eco 1, but from my experience in the Eco modes, gauging it out, I would say I would not expect that battery to do over 50 miles in anything for me. Again, I'm six feet one, 220. If you're smaller and less than 160 pounds, you probably could see those numbers. The other thing is the max payload on the Mantis for some reason is listed as 265 pounds. I think it would do more than 265, but you should just go by what the manufacturer says. So they're saying the top speed, top speed for Mantis was listed at 51, 52 miles an hour when they launched it. Now it's top speeds listed at 45 miles an hour. And I don't know if that's because they corrected themselves from different findings or if they changed the settings in the bike. 
and that could reflect some of these number changes. I'm not sure because the zero to 30 also changed, but whatever the case, you're dealing with a 35 amp hour battery. There's not a lot of spare room in that hatch underneath. I really wish that the hatch would be flush with the rest of the seat, like a traditional banana seat on motorcycle, because two things, one, it would help with control a little bit and give something more for your knees to grab. Although you can grab the bike where it is uh, with the rubber logos on the side, that kind of works, but it would be really nice to also have that extra room underneath for a taller battery or an upgraded battery. So I'm hoping that's something that RAR will do in the future for aftermarket parts. The other thing about the bike that is interesting. It does have a metal gearbox that is attached to the metal motor. I like that, but it's kind of a unibody design that will bolt off, I guess, if you had to work on it. But I do like the metal casing. The breather tube or breather cap isn't a tube like the Talaria Sting for the gearbox. It's actually a brass cap with a vent right there on top. If you get too much gear oil in, it builds up pressure, it shoots right out onto the gearbox. That's annoying. I do wish it had a vent hose like the Talaria Sting, but the Talaria Sting has a composite case type gearbox around it. It's got metal internals, but the outside's some kind of plastic, essentially. That bothers me. I really think they should have made that metal. It just, for peace of mind, I know they upgraded it with the R model, but it says they added a support bracket, not the material change. The Mantis beats it there in my opinion with a larger metal gearbox and it will let you on the mantis it will let you fill the oil up a lot more than apparently you need because i didn't see a specified amount in the manual when i did the oil change so i put a lot <laughs> in there not all the way to top i put enough to where i knew there was too much in there because there wasn't any gauge there and whatever extra was in it over hard rides sped out and shot out the cap which is fine but uh, there's roughly only three to four ounces of oil out of it at the factory, or at least that's the way mine was. And the Talaria was even very similar, if not less oil, but you can put more in the Mantis gearbox. But unfortunately, if you don't run a vent hose, it will very quickly extrude that out onto your bike's gearbox. Um, working on the Mantis, because I did the gear changes in the chain myself were really easy and straightforward. They had some thread lock on things, but it wasn't as tight as changing the gear on the Talaria Sting. So it was easier to do the gear changeover. And I think if I remember correctly, changing that front cog was a 20 millimeter stack height cog on the front for the spindle size. 17 millimeters very, is too small for that motor. Um, speaking of the motor, uh, during our testing, it did get hot to the touch. And I don't know if we were kind of hot seating it more than the Talaria Sting, but the Talaria Sting never got too warm outside of, you could touch it and not feel like your hand was getting burned. It would just be at most a little warm where the RARS motor would, especially after safety um, controls were turned off on the bike, it would be too hot to touch and want to leave your hand there at times. So I was a little worried about that in the stock form power to the motor being stock. It makes you curious to see if there would be a cooling and heating issue with the motor if it were upgraded to a higher wattage and bigger battery or turned up through the controller to higher wattage because this bike really begs to be set to 10,000 to 12,500 watts. And some good takeaways for you. I don't love it, but I really like it. I could love it, but it rides like a 5,000 watt max bike. It doesn't ride like 7,500 watts. It could hold the gap once it got opened up 20 to 30 yards in some cases. Sometimes it would be um, closer than that, but it would match better with the gear change on the Mantis, but I could never get by. And this was switching out riders, me riding the Talaria, other people around the Talaria, etc. It really would never pass the Talaria Sting unless the rider in front of you made some kind of mistake. By my rough calculations for it to match the Sting MX-3, it needs probably 10,000 watts if it's hitting 7,500 watts now, because then it would exceed it on top end, even at 60 volt, I would think it was still uh, surpass the speed and torque of the MX-3 stock. But then we have the Sting R MX-4 coming in the equation. And what would it take to match or surpass that? Well, I would think at least 12,000 watts by my 11 to 12,000 watts peak uh, by my experience between the MX-3 Talaria. Now, I know that's a lot to think about if you're not familiar with those because it was a lot for me to think about just then. Either way, 
it's a good bike. It's a great bike. In isolation, you would never know any difference. You'd be very happy with it. It's well made. It performs well. It's a lot of fun. I wanted to grab it a lot just to ride around the neighborhood a little bit just for fun little quick rides. Off-road, it's very capable and planted. I felt more stable on it than the Talaria Sting because it's slightly longer wheelbase of around two and a half inches. The weight is still light enough for around 160 pounds to be right in that middle weight range. What keeps me from loving it, it needs a 45 to 50 amp hour battery, preferably a 72 volt system, but 60 volt could be fine if it were to uh, work as it is. I would change a couple other things about it. If this is the off-road model only, I would strip it down a little more and not put all the turn signals and controls the same on the handlebar because it just makes it feel a little clunky and busier. It makes it feel less MX capable. So they are diversifying with street only version to my knowledge. And that's the one that should have the bells and whistles and trim because this one's too fancy and too polished and finished for purebred off-road riding or much less racing. So also the suspension, not having a rear linkage, it's not as progressive as other systems. There's a lot of bikes out there that don't have rear linkage. So I'm not harping on that. I'll be testing one coming up uh, that I just got in. That's the admin jet armor uh, 72 volt with 70 amp hour battery. That's the great bike too, it, but it doesn't have linkage. Um, it's not the end all end of the world, but it definitely would be nice to have since the Talaria Sting does have a uh, rear suspension linkage and a little more progressive feel with the rear suspension. The raw Mantis is on the left and the admin jet armor is on the right, which is definitely more of a full form electric dirt bike. It is what some people have called seven eighths of the size of a full, I guess, AMA 250 or 450 dirt bike. I don't really know if I'd say that's verified, but it's the size of some full size bikes. I think it's around the size I've heard of a KTM 300 EXC or something along that lines, uh, power wise, somewhere between 300 and 350, but I'm not trying to review that yet. The review for this bike's coming up next, which I do sell and deal those. So I'll be running through the highs and the lows with that bike. But that in reference to size is KTM free ride size. It's identical frame, pretty much not subframe maybe, but the, the main frame is almost identical, if not spot on, at least with the middle section, there's some differences, but uh, there's uh, some exact similarities, but the weight is a lot higher than what the Mantis is. But I, I, I wanted to add this in because honestly, it's kind of from my argument that the Mantis is more in the size range of the Suron Ultra B, which is still kind of middle size. It, even though it's up on a stand, it's bigger enough than a Suron Light BX and the Tolaria. A follow up with that, I have read in the community uh, group on Facebook for the RAR owners that they are working on a remapping that will add up to 25% more power to that. Now, if that be the case, I think that at that point it will be able to compete at least more closely with the Tolaria Sting R because it wasn't lagging behind against the MX4 except for initial acceleration. So if you go back to the beginning of the video and you look at the aerial drone footage that I have with those gaps between the two riders on the Talaria and the Mantis, that's the gap it usually maintains because it loses that initial launch. So it wouldn't be a whole shot contender and it's hard to get back that gap on equal riders, but that it does maintain it. It doesn't lose ground after that. So it's just about the takeoff pretty much just wanted to interject and add this in. Um, in closing, I, I do really love the Mantis, but if they get that 25% remapping on it, it's really going to help it. Besides having to turn off all the safety features, which can really ruin the riding ability, that one's open now and, and doesn't have those throttle issues. So once those safety issues were turned off and deprogrammed, which RAW really helped me with and sent a programmable panel out to make that happen. It really came to life with more power and a lot of fun, but the riding difference between it 
in something like the Edmund Jets night and day. I'll do a review on this one. I mean, this is still borderline play by territory where this is more get more authentically enduro motocross feeling. I'm, I'm not going to say it's a direct comparison there because I know it's not, but it's just a different category with weight, size, and suspension capabilities and handling as well. In closing, if you, if you want a bike that can do it all and have one heck of a nice build quality and a good, uh, a good middle of the road, kind of make it what you want. You could go more street for supermoto, or you could go kind of upgrade things, hopefully as parts become more available for uh, more true motocross enduro type riding. That's great. But with all that said for the off-road enduro, I'm gonna go out on the trail and kind of get lost thing. The battery, in my opinion, needs to be bigger for sure. I'm not seeing huge numbers on, um, on sport mode at all it drains it so quickly uh it, you can just see it drain so quickly so it's um it, if you're going to ride in eco mode it's fine with eco 3 but eco 3 needs more mid-range torque and more mid-range period um it just doesn't have that zip to it it does fine on the street but off-road you you need more torque for eco 3 and eco 1 and 2 forget about it i mean if I'm wanting to limp at home, I pretty much don't see why I would ever use Eco 1 or 2 unless I was just commuting around the city trying to go for max mileage or endurance. So that's about it. Uh, maybe I'll update the video about this. I'm not sure. We'll see how it goes with interest. But uh, yeah, I pretty much told you everything, the good and the bad that uh, comes to mind at this point. So if you've purchased a Rar Mantis, you've made a great decision as far as I'm concerned. It is a great bike, uh, but every bike has its pros and cons, and this one uh, could use a few changes around, just like uh, all the other ones I'll be reviewing coming up. So thanks so much, and I hope this helped you. Please like and subscribe, and I'll be bringing more content in the future. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Again, like and subscribe and looking forward to the next segment. Thanks.